hello to our third workshop demonstration and uh, today we will be making a brush the type of brush that we use in miniature painting is sourced from the tail of a squirrel. So, you, we take hair from a squirrel's tail and then bring them together to make a brush. So, there is a lot of little uh, little paraphernalia that you need for this uh, workshop, but most things you can get online and uh, through other sources. First up you need uh, some sort of glass surface. So, I have taken a glass, it could be a smaller piece of glass also and then I have just taped it with paper in the back, so that you can actually see uh, the hair when I put them on the glass. Otherwise, glass is see through, so you would not be able to see anything, but it is easy you just put a piece of paper and then we can work with that. So, I have taped paper here. Then of course, we need a squirrel tail and this uh, tail uh, I did not kill it myself. Uh, the squirrel tail is from you can get squirrel tails from any fishing shops. So, you can find them from any online fishing stores and we will include a link uh, of that as well. What we use for uh, in, in, in South Asia is of course, the local Indian squirrel which is much smaller. So, the hair that you get is also smaller and more springy. Uh, right now, we are using the American squirrel which is slightly bigger, but has more fluffy hair, but I think we can make do with that as well. So, we have the glass, we have the squirrel tail. Then what you can also use as the handle of the brush is I mean, we, we use ideally a bamboo stick that then you can cut into a small thin piece, but uh, I use chopsticks. So, you can take uh, chopsticks and you can cut them in and make them very thin and I will show you how to do that as well. And for uh, to pass the brush through uh, the quill, we take pigeon feathers and if uh, usually have pigeons, the feathers are just lying around and that is at least in South Asia, it is really easy to find pigeon feathers, but you might be able to also use uh, a, a sort of local big ish bird, not a tiny sparrow, but a smaller, uh, but a slightly bigger like a, maybe a blue jay or something. And, uh, uh, you can find feathers in the forest or uh, in, under a tree or something. And then what we do is we cut the quill and only take that tip of the feather, because otherwise it would be a li larger spine. So, we just cut that and use the tip through which we pass the hair of the squirrel to make the brush. Alternatively, you could even use older brushes that are no longer in use. Sometimes I reuse brushes. So, you have the sort of metal quill of an already pre-existing brush the, whose hair had fallen off. It was an old brush. So, you can also reuse those sort of uh, older brushes as well. You also need a little bit of uh, sewing string thread and you need a needle as well and ideally a not the tiny sewing needle, but slightly larger needle. And gum Arabic. And then we will also use a cutter to shape our handle. So, let us start with just shaping the handle and I will just give you a brief introduction to that and then I already have carved a complete chopstick, but it is basically the same technique that we used very first in our first demonstration on how to make, how to sharpen a pencil. We do exactly that here. And as we sharpen and shape our bamboo stick, we can keep checking. Uh, so, this is of course, still a little thick. So, we need to keep sharpening it and it takes a little bit of time not to, it should not take too long.
And then when you've done that for a while and you keep checking whether it fits into the quill or not, eventually it should be small enough to go in like this. But you don't want to push it right through the uh, quill because then it'll uh, rip open because it's, it's pretty fragile. So you just want to place it gently here just to see that, all right, this fits. So it's around halfway through, not the whole way. So you don't want to pin it, shorten it down too much. And then when you know it's ready, then you just take a piece of sandpaper and just smoothen it because otherwise when we uh, use the cutter, it's, got, it's a little edgy. So but we, we can just sort of go in and just smoothen it so that it's easier to handle when we're actually making our painting. Once again, I'm rotating it on all sides so that it's even. And you do it for a little while and then you can actually feel how it starts to get pretty smooth. So then we have our handle ready. All right, so after making the handle, we now select the hair of the squirrel. So when you look at this uh, tail, what we don't need is the hair which is right at the end because that's way too long and stringy. And we also don't need the hair that's too close to the uh, body either. The best hair is usually over here in this part. This area is the best hair and you can with these squirrels, you can make, most probably make maybe six, seven brushes if you're careful with what sort of hair you choose. You take a scissor. And then what you do is you put it on, a, on the piece of glass and then uh, place water into the hairs so that they're easy to handle. Because what we're going to do is select individual hairs because inside this bunch, there are lots of hair which are um, broken. Sometimes they're too short. So we want to make a consistent brush. So we select single hair. The first thing is to make it all wet. And now we use our needle. To select the hair that we need. And when we start separating them, a lot of the loose hair or the small hair starts to automatically sift away. And those we can just start putting to the side, things that we don't need. So I'm just taking small, small bunches, sort of shifting them around in the water so that any small, loose hair, uh, unwanted hair can sift away. So 
you see a lot of excess hair that is unwanted. Either it's broken, it's weak, or it's too small, it's already starting to stay behind in the water itself. So that hair we just take aside quickly. So almost 50%, or maybe 35, 40% of the hair out from a bunch that I just cut will end up not being used because there's a lot of uh, hair that we don't need. This takes a little while. But after a while you start to get, in, get a sense of the flow of the hair and how, what sort of hair we're looking for. And then we go through two, three other processes of sifting out the hair. After we've made the main selection, I'll show you how we go through some other processes, taking out any unwanted hair. And the idea is to have it thick at the bottom. At the base, you have a lot of bungee hair. And then at the top, it should be more pointy. So now we're starting to get a shape of what sort of brush we will end up having. Still sifting out some of the shorter stubs. Now I'm just selecting individual tiny little hairs that seem to be that consistent size and I'm just sort of stacking them together.
Sometimes you notice split hair, which definitely should not make the cut. All right, so after we have sort of selected a nice bunch, then we can actually now move to the next step, which is to collect it and then uh, tie it up in this string. So I'm just making a loop here. I'll just leave it there. Well, I hold all the hair. And just give it a nice wash so that if there's any residues or any small hair that are left, they can wash away. I'm holding pretty tight in the center so that any extra hair can go and then I do the same from the top. And just pass it through the loop. Just loop it one more time. There you go. So now we have the basic brush and it'll go through one or two other phases where we can still continue selecting the and now we can actually wash it without it fearing, without any fear of it sort of coming apart because we've tied it, well not too tightly, otherwise we'll break the uh, hair, but just tightly enough. And then our next step is to put some gum Arabic I'm just making a sort of solution because on its own the gum Arabic might be too thick. Just adding a little bit of water and then dipping our freshly prepared squirrel hair into the gum Arabic. so that it becomes stiff. And what happens then is that we just sort of hang it somewhere where it can just dangle and dry. And it takes maybe five, 10 minutes for it to dry. So we can just let it dry somewhere and then come back to it once it's uh, completely dry because after that, what we will do is to try and pass it through our quill. So while that is drying, we can clean the uh, uh, pigeon or whichever bird you chose, uh, the, the quill of that, because sometimes there's a lot of muck. Uh, occasionally there's also little, little feathers that are still sticking on. So you can take the cutter and gently just, very gently just scrape off any fuzz 
that is around the quill. And then go in with the needle uh, very gently and try to just make sure. So, I am just sort of passing it through here. So, that any dirt or fuzz or any other stuff can get pushed out. So, I am just, just gently pushing out in order to make the hole a little big, so that we can actually pass our squirrel hair through this hole. And when I do this, I actually see that there is some sort of white uh, stuff coming out from the white feathery fuzzy stuff coming out from the heart of the quill. So, we just clean it up a little. So, uh, the idea is to push the hair that we have collected and wound in the string after it is dried. The uh, we want to push it through the quill, so that it goes through and through the quill and in through the other side. And once it is come out from there, we can pull it out and then just pull it out gently. And once that has uh, is ready, we can actually tie the handle with the already existing string that we wound the uh, hair with. And we do that very gently and then we have our brush ready. Sometimes we need to work with the tip of the brush itself, which we can sort of make if there is some extra hair that are sticking out, we can even cut it with a cutter. But the best way is to just keep it running with some water and some ink and see how it works. And the more we work it, the more water will start work. Uh, containing into the base of the hair and then it should be ready to uh, go.